Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deep in Science lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and some graph paper. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is Plant Nutrients and for our starter activity I would like us to consider these leaves which have started to turn yellow. I would like you to try and explain how this yellowing of these leaves will affect photosynthesis. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. So let's talk about this yellowing of these leaves. If these leaves are becoming less green, then that means there is less chloroplasts in these leaves. And if there are less chloroplasts, that means the rate of photosynthesis is also going to decrease. In today's lesson, we are going to recall the nutrients required for optimum plant growth. We're going to explain the role of each of these nutrients, and we're going to describe the symptoms a plant may exhibit if they are deficient in any of these nutrients. The first thing we're going to need to do before we talk about any of these nutrients is to get down this table. It has four headings and it goes down five lines. Our four headings are nutrient, ion, function and deficiency symptoms. And the four nutrients we're going to be looking at are magnesium, potassium, nitrates and phosphates. To fill out this table, I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll fill out this table together. Now that we all have our tables, I'm going to talk about each one of these nutrients in turn. And as I talk about each one, I would like to fill out the table. I want to know what its ion is, I want to know what the function of that nutrient is, and I want to know what symptoms the plant would exhibit if there was a deficiency in this nutrient. Starting off with magnesium. Its ion is Mg2+, and the function of magnesium is to make chlorophyll, the green pigment contained within the chloroplasts. If there isn't enough magnesium, then you can't make chlorophyll, and so the number of chloroplasts go down, and the rate of photosynthesis goes down. And because magnesium is responsible for making this green pigment, when there is a deficiency, the whole leaf will turn yellow. Looking at potassium, its ion is K+. Its function is to regulate the opening and closing of the stomata, those little holes in the bottom of the leaf to allow for gas exchange. If there is a potassium deficiency, then there will be less carbon dioxide entering the leaf through the stomata and you'll have a lower rate of photosynthesis. And if there is a potassium deficiency over a long period of time, the edges of the leaf will also begin to die. This brings us to nitrates, and its ion is NO3 minus. Nitrates are used for the synthesis of new proteins. And if our plant has a deficiency in nitrates and it can't make these proteins, that's going to result in less plant growth. And if you have a plant which is lacking in nitrates, you'll get yellowing leaves and stunted growth. Which means we've got one more thing to look at, which is the phosphates. Phosphate ion is PO4 3 minus and phosphates are required for healthy roots. If there is a phosphate deficiency, our roots will absorb less water and less nutrients. And this is probably the easiest deficiency to diagnose because when you have a phosphate deficiency, the leaves turn purple. So let's make sure we haven't missed anything out of our table. The ions for our plant nutrients, magnesium is Mg2+, potassium is K+, nitrates is NO3-, minus, and phosphates are PO4-3-. minus. Moving on then to the functions, our magnesium is used to make chlorophyll, our potassium allows the stomata to open and close, our nitrates are used for protein synthesis, and our phosphates are needed for healthy roots. Which brings us on to the deficiencies. A deficiency in magnesium will cause a yellowing of the whole leaf. If there is a deficiency of potassium, you'll get yellowing at the edge of the leaf, and over a longer period of time, the edge of the leaf will begin to die. If there is a deficiency in nitrates, you'll get yellow leaves and stunted growth. And if there is a deficiency in our phosphates, then you'll have purple leaves. I'm going to leave this on the screen for five seconds. If you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll carry on with the lesson together. Okay, let's move on. So now we can recall the nutrients required for optimum plant growth. 
We can also explain the role of each of these nutrients and describe the symptoms a plant may exhibit if they have a nutrient deficiency. But next I want to look at some ways that people make sure that our plants have these nutrients by looking at different types of fertilizers. For our next task, what I'd like to do is to evaluate the use of compost versus this fertilizer. And because this is an evaluate question, you need to say all the good things and bad things about compost, all the good things and bad things about this fertilizer X, and then you need to give a conclusion. And if you really want to challenge, I'd like to explain how a lack of magnesium can lead to less glucose in plants. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you evaluated this compost and fertilizer? Have you chosen which one that you would use? Let's have a look at some of the good points and bad points about both of these. Our compost has more magnesium than our fertilizer. It's always good to use the figures in your answer. The compost contains 1% magnesium. The fertilizer only contains 0.9% magnesium. Looking at the other contents, the fertilizer contains more potassium, more nitrates, and more phosphates. And again, we can use the figures. Our fertilizer contains 5% potassium, whereas our compost only contains 0.5%. Our fertilizer contains 1.6% nitrates, whereas our compost only contains 0.4%. And our fertilizer contains 7.2% phosphates, whereas our compost only contains 0.9%. The next thing we need to evaluate is the cost. The compost is free, whereas the fertilizer costs £4.99. And so these are all the comparisons that we can make, but we still need to make our final conclusion. So now we've compared everything we can about the compost and the fertilizer, but we still need to make a conclusion. And there's no right or wrong answer for this. You can say, I would choose the compost because it's free and it has more magnesium. Or you could say, I would choose fertilizer X because it has a much higher concentration of potassium, nitrates and phosphates. But your answer can only be considered correct if you have justified your answer using the comparisons we made before. Did you have a go at the challenge? How does a lack of magnesium result in plants having less glucose? If you've got an answer, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. So now we've also looked at the concentration of these nutrients in two different types of fertilizers, one that we can make by ourselves and one which is produced for industry. So now we're gonna look at fertilizer economy, which looks at how much fertilizer we need to use to get the maximum amount of crops. Here we have a farmer who uses different amounts of fertilizer X on various different wheat crops and they measure the yield from each field. So they measure how much wheat they get from each batch. And our farmer's results are shown here. So this shows how much fertilizer this farmer was using per hectare and how much wheat they managed to yield from that. For our next task, we are going to draw a line graph of the amount of fertilizer X versus wheat yield. And after you've drawn your graph, I would like you to conclude which would be the best amount of fertilizer to use. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your graph? Let's have a look at what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to start in the bottom left with my zero. When we're looking at a table of data, the column on the left hand side goes across the X axis and this goes up to 300. So I'm gonna go across the bottom of my X axis in 100s all the way up to 300. I'm then going to draw my line in and I'm gonna give my axis a title. I'm gonna give it the same title as it has in the table, the amount of fertilizer per hectare. Then I'm gonna do the same for my Y axis. So I'm gonna put my numbers down my Y axis I can see that this starts at 28 and ends at 44. So I would like my graph to go from 20 to 50 to make sure that I can include all of these numbers. So I'm gonna put those in. But because you can see I've gone up in tens, 20, 30, 40, 50, the spacing between each one is different. So the space between zero and 20 is the same distance as it is between 20 and 30. And because of this, when I draw my line, I need to add this symbol to show that between zero and 20, I'm not using the same scale. I'm gonna add my axis title, which is gonna be the same as this table heading, the wheat yield in tons per hectare. 
So now that we've drawn our axes, we can start plotting our points. When we have zero fertilizer, our yield is 28. When this increases to 50, our yield goes up to 30. When fertilizer increases to 100, our yield increases to 35. When we increase it again to 150, our yield becomes 39. When our fertilizer increases to 200, our yield becomes 44. And if we increase the amount of fertilizer further to 250 and 300, then it remains at 44. We need to draw a nice smooth curve through these points. And we need a conclusion, which would be the best amount of fertilizer to use. And this data shows that the 200 kilograms per hectare would result in the maximum growth. There's no point using the 250 and the 300 because this is going to cost our farmer more money without having an increase in yield. So now we've looked at everything and we've had a look at the real world application of these plant nutrients. We've looked at them in terms of fertilizer and we've looked at that fertilizer in terms of its economy. Which means there's only one more thing I would like us to do, which is to diagnose what is wrong with this plant. And I would like you to explain how you arrived at your answer by making reference to all four plant minerals. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.